Well, hello again, friends. Great to see you. Pastor Pete here in Dundee, Oregon. And uh, as, as our usual, it's time for some coffee and conversation. So grab your mug or your bottle or I don't know, what, however you drink your coffee. Grab your coffee, your tea, your, your uh, Jamba Juice, whatever it is. Let's sit down together and have some conversation. Open your Bible today to Psalm 62. We're going to take a look at the first two verses. So get comfortable. Let's settle in. Let's, I'm looking forward to our conversation. You know, um, David had this psalm written. He it says in the beginning. He says this is for the choir master to the choir master. So he's commissioning the choir master. Take these words that I've written, take them and turn them into a song. Take them and turn them into something that we can use to sing over and over and lift our praises to God because this will show who He is. So psalm, but it was written at a time. It's very interesting. It was written at a time where he was being um, he was really being chased and attacked. He was it, it, on the on the verge of having his enemies overcome him, and he really had nowhere else to turn. And so, instead of trying to figure out how do I do this in my own strength, he finally turned to God. And that's maybe a good lesson for all of us. You know, this world that we're in, uh, and I don't know what your situation is. I don't know if the current day news has kind of got you under the economy's tanking on you. Maybe there's family disputes or some personal situations that are difficult maybe you've made some poor choices or others have made poor choices that affected you the world is upside down it's topsy-turvy it seems like there's a dispute everywhere we turn and there's david in the same situation that's why i think this psalm is so good for us today so listen to what he said he's facing destruction he says hey we're in trouble so choir master take these words and make a psalm out of them so we can praise god it says first two verses for god alone my soul waits for in silence from him comes my salvation. For he is my rock and my for salvation. My fortress I shall not be greatly shaken. For God alone my soul waits. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my salvation. I want to just break down some of these words because there's so much meaning behind even the words. And sometimes some of these familiar Bible words, if you read the Bible and listen to it enough, they become too familiar. And I want to give you a little bit more depth and flavor for what these words are. So the first one says, my soul waits. So I want you to keep this thought going that my soul, when David's referring to his soul, he's thinking about and discussing about and telling us about all that's really at the very core of him. Like not what you can see on the surface, not what I can do anymore with all my strength or my smarts or anything, but what's at the very essence of me, my soul, the mind, mind will, and emotions. It's the true self. And then he says, he says, from him, from God, comes my salvation. And when he's talking about salvation, certainly he is saying that there's an opportunity for my health and my welfare to be, to be cared for, that I'm going to be okay. But it's so much more. What, this word salvation is so much more. It means there's a deliverance. Like, like what is getting ready to, what has already been, is getting ready to, and might soon in the future hold me in, in captive. Is, I'm going to be free from that. I'm going to have victory over what opposes me, victory over what, what challenges me. But even more so, there's a sense of, and a very de strong declaration that when, I'm, when I have this salvation, I will have prosperity in the days to come. There's so much more to salvation than just overcoming the present struggle. There's a life to be lived of prosperity because of being set free and being victorious. Next, he talks about the rock. And the rock is very simply... Uh, a very strong high cliff. It's more than just a boulder or, or something you could pick up and throw. It's really disgusting here. God is my rock. He's my very high strong cliff. And he goes on to further to say he's my fortress. He's not just a cliff up there that's hard to climb. Uh, when you get finally get to the top, even if you could make it, what you find is there's a stronghold. There's a refuge. And I can go there because God has given me the means to get there to him. But even more again, there's so much to this, this whole fortress concept. There's so much to it. It's not just a place where I know that I am safe, but it's actually a place where God is acting as my defender. He's doing something intentionally so that I don't have to fight my own battles when I'm there, when I'm with God. And then the result of that, he says, I know I won't be shaken. I will never be moved from this refuge. I cannot be disrupted. I, and I am completely secure. I know I will never fall from God's presence as long as I pursue him, I seek him, and I praise him, which is why he's written a praise song. 
So now I skipped one key phrase right at the beginning. Waits in silence. My soul waits in silence. And basically saying this, my soul finds a place of rest. I am at rest in God. That's the sanctuary. That's the salvation in the rock, on the fortress. I'm at rest in God. And a calmness comes over me. A, a patience fills me. A sense of peace that I can't understand takes over. And I have a growing confidence. And, and this confidence, this patience, peace, calmness only comes because I depend on God and God alone. And that's what David is saying. And that's the, his advice to us today. And you know, it's his faith that's fueling his hope for that prosperous future. And we all long for that. We all long for a future that's got peace and tranquility and prosperity. But I want to tell you today, that comes from God. And it comes from our relationship with God. And our relationship with God is, is straight to the heart when we praise Him. And I just want to encourage you, to even in the midst of your struggles today, take a breath, find a quiet place, tell God how much you love Him, how much you appreciate Him, and praise Him for who He is and then find rest in his refuge. God bless you today, friends. I'm so glad we joined together, and I'm glad that you're in God's presence even now. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.